Meet pro staff members Jay Jackson and Brady Miller. Jay Jackson heads to the Cornhusker State in Nebraska. And Brady Miller is hunting in his home state of Indiana, the Hoosier State. <laughs> 20 yards, dude. <laughs> Why did I not have my bow? Let's go back to the Cornhusker State two years ago with Jay Jackson. Look at this. Jay loves to self-video, and this first year, hey, he shoots a buck here that is just an absolute tank and puts on a show. I just smoked a 140 on freaking video in Nebraska, baby. Now last year, Jay goes back and sure enough, hey, he's right back in the same area and guess what? He gets it done once again, self video style. Dead deer walking, man. Dead deer walking. Boom, baby. Boom, baby. That's my second buck in Nebraska. Two years in a row. I think I'll come back next year. What do y'all think? I love it. Jay's excited to leave his home state of Arkansas. December 1st. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I'm heading for Nebraska. I've had good luck out there in the past. I've never really hunted out there late season much. I did one time, but uh, I've had good luck in the rut, so hopefully I can carry it over. He leaves about 3.30 in the morning, drives all the way to the Cornhusker State, and arrives around 2 p.m. All right, good evening. First evening here in Nebraska. Guy set up in a spot, passed the good buck last year. He had a busted side. But I'm a little bit further west. Just the way everything's laid out this year. I ain't, it ain't in the rut. It's it's late season. First this day's the first of December. So I got wheat just right up the bottom from me. And I got some wheat back behind me. The way this is laid out, it's all bedding area out in front of me. I got some trails, so they're gonna be coming out of that bedding area to be either coming to that wheat or this wheat. So we can make it happen right here in the southwest Nebraska. Jay Jackson. Hurt you. Come on. Now keep in mind Jay is self-videoing again. He gets that twisted timber tree stand set up, and boom, here we go. Hey, it's getting into prime time light. And sure enough, here comes old Sad Daddy. Nebraska a full four hours 
And I've got a mature buck down. He's busted up bad. But I got a mature buck down. Yeah! Thank you, Lord, for blessing me like you have. I killed a buck yesterday at home. Oh, I get in the shakes now. I killed a buck yesterday at home with a rifle, no video. And back to back days, I come here. I, I woke up at 3.30 this morning, left out, drove all the way. I knew this spot was at. I come in here and got it done on the first day. On mature whitetail in Nebraska. Boom. Well guys, here he is. Just a monster of a beat up old buck. Wow, three years in a row, Jay Jackson self-videoing. The Cornhusker State has paid off once again. Got up here right around two o'clock, got in my stand about three and five or five, 15. Here he come walking down this bottom, just right into me. Shot him at 30 yards, put the, put the elite and the solid through him, and uh, he ducked my head a little bit and uh, find him, but. Jay, I don't know what it is about you and those solid broadheads, but buddy, you got a good thing going. Out here, I killed a 150. I killed a small three and a half year old deer last year, and then this buck here, he's he's five and a half year old, no doubt, a big old bruiser. But uh, I can't wait to come back next year. I've been trying to get a mule deer, but it's too hard to get away from the white tails for me to think about mule deer. So anyway. Now let's head to the Hoosier State, Indiana with pro staff member Brady Miller. Brady and cousin Tyler have been managing the family farm for the last five or six years. Got some beautiful food plots here. Hey, this is what it's all about. This hunt actually started with the trail camera pictures starting back about four years ago when they got a buck on there with four white stocking feet. So they nicknamed this buck Socks. So 2013, Socks is a year and a half. In the second year, Socks had a split G2 on that right side. He's two and a half years old, gets that free pass again. In that third year, Sox becomes more visible. And boy, is he growing up. He dropped that split G2. And there's no question he's establishing himself in the pecking order. Another neat thing is, is Brady and Tyler had a lot of trail camera pictures of old Sox shedding out his antlers. And now, he becomes number one on the hit list for 2016. Sox showed up on the camera and at four years old, he is flat put on the mass. And the neat thing is, getting lots of visible daylight pictures throughout the summer. Let's jump right in the ground blind with pro staff member TJ Unger, who's running camera for Brady. Hey, first thing, beautiful three and a half year old steps out. TJ's wanting to shoot him bad with that elite, but Brady's not having none of it. It's socks or nothing. The first actual sighting of socks takes place in late October there. Brady's sitting there, staying back, glassing and scouting, and sure enough, he catches old socks bedded down. We found him. I just don't know how I'm gonna get on him. He's got a doe there he's bedded with, and I don't know, he can see out in this whole field. I'm pretty sure he knows I'm watching him. but. I'm gonna try to get a game plan together and see if we can get him.
You know, here we are in late October and Sox is already locked down with the dough. Brady watched him for about four hours. Watch this as Sox stands up, shakes off, and puts on a show for us. What a buck. And boy, after that particular day, they must have been a lot of hot does in the area because they were getting socks on the trip camera about every day. Four encounters with the bow, but now gun season slipping upon us, it's time to get granddaddy's gun. Head in here and uh, check the covert real quick. Socks has been frequent in this area, and I haven't checked this camera in a while. How cool is this? Brady gets off work, goes out, and sits in the CRP field, has his game hide and the real tree camo on sets up and he's waiting on old socks. I'm, I'm walking back here to set up in the CRP field and this is actually where I've been seeing socks cross quite a bit. I just got off work so I rushed home and uh, try to get set up before anything starts moving. Um, it's probably gonna happen quick if it happens. Brady's glassing, all of a sudden he sees socks stand up on the other side of the road across the road. Oh, it gets dark fast. Fingers crossed. Come on, baby. Well, Socks walks up to the old road. He looks right, he looks left, and here he comes. Well, Sox walks up to the old road. He looks right, he looks left, and here he comes. Sox crosses the road, gets out of sight just downhill. Now Brady's about to panic because he's trying to find him in the camera. What does he do? He takes that dual grunt call, hits it a couple licks, and boom, 40 yards, there he is. Talk about an adrenaline rush. I've been there. Well, Sock starts walking. You can tell that he actually makes contact with Brady. Probably don't know what he is, but he walks up there, stops. Talk about hectic. Because when Brady gets that gun up, he realizes that camera's not right on him. So he has to reach over it 17 yards and move that camera real quick. But he gets it done, and I'll tell you right now, the Big Buck celebration is about to begin. Go down. Go down. Go down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've had that deer four different times this week and could not get close enough with my bow. I, mean, I just had him at 30 yards and I had my rifle, but. <laughs> He's down right there. yards, dude. <laughs> Why did I not have my bow? Boom, 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 boom. This is what it's all about. Oh. 
I can't believe that just happened. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God. I've been waiting on that for a long time. It's been seven years since I've killed a buck. I just kept passing young three-year-olds and I passed one I probably shouldn't have a few years ago, but this has made it all worth it. I've had so much history with this deer. What an absolute stud. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. He's definitely not a giant, but I have so much history with this deer. I know he's four years old. I got his match set of shed, sheds from two years ago. And man, them white feet, just, it's been fun chasing him. I looked up and he was 40 yards walking right at me. And I got the camera on him. And he stopped and looked at me. And <laughs> uh, I looked at the camera and it was not on him. And I slowly reached over as he was watching me. And somehow got the camera on him, got back on him. And he didn't run 100 yards. <laughs> no, I didn't see you sneak in. <laughs> I'm off. Hey, better watch out behind you. Well, Dave, he's gone. Yeah, you let him go another there, he wouldn't maybe have another one. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and a nice one. Can <laughs> you imagine how heavy he did? Oh, you got a nice dog. Oh, my goodness. How cool is this? To get all the family members, your best friends, all coming out there to have a big buck celebration with you. Right here is another reason why I hunt, is moments like this. Grandma, Grandpa, best friends, family, gosh, mighty, does it get any better than that? Wow. Brady, my hat's off to you. I love the story. I love the history. What a hunt. And what a way to celebrate socks. And I know that you've got a place on your wall for him. What a neat story to take Granddaddy Lowell's gun, this old Remington 700 243, and shoot the buck of a lifetime with it on the family farm. It just gets no better. I know Brady will remember this hunt for the rest of his life, and so will the rest of the family. Thanks for sharing.